What's going on y'all and today we'll be going through every single augment going into set 9.5. I'll be going through them and I'll be letting you guys know what are the best times to take these augments and how to play them out after you take them. Now there's actually not a whole lot of new augments going into the new set, just really a handful of them, but we're going to go through all the old ones as well um, for all of you guys who took a break or maybe didn't play last set or you've just never had an experienced player like myself explain to you kind of how to play out these augments. I think this will be helpful to anybody. If you don't know who I am, I am a multi-set challenger player. I've played this game since set one, and I played it over 100 games on the PBE server in preparation for the new set and to make all these guides for you guys going in here so that you guys can have a head start on your set 9.5 ranked climb. With that out of the way, let's get into this. And yeah, we're just gonna try to speed run through these. And a lot of the trait specific augments, I probably just won't say anything about it. I'm not gonna read what these augments do verbatim. Um, you guys can read that yourself. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna try to get through them quickly. So AFK, AFK is an augment that you typically want to take when you have a weak early game. You can take it whenever you'd like, um, but you generally don't take this when like you have a lot of upgraded units because you could just like play more aggressive in the early game. And so yeah, just take this if you have a weak early game, especially if you're playing in metas where you want to force a specific comp having extra gold will help you force um all natural uh this is just fine tempo augment usually it's pretty good whenever you're playing a vertical as well so if you're playing a a trait stacking thing like let's say you're playing like six challengers or something or like six gunners or whatever and you don't have extra items you're only going to itemize one of the carries uh then it can be really nice but i like to take all natural when i don't have a lot of items committed and i'm already winning i can use it to win more and i just use it for tempo and then late game it's just not as useful because you do have a lot of items to put everywhere okay armor building you um armor building or army building sorry army building i really like to take when i don't have a lot of gold and i know that i need to roll especially on like three two i get this off I have like 30 gold on level six and I know that I need to roll. I'm like, man, my game is doomed. But I get this army building and I go, oh, okay, I know that I can build a strong comp by just rolling a little bit of gold here because I can duplicate if I need to. Additionally, you can take this whenever you are re-rolling. So if you're re-rolling a two or three cost, you can take this and uh, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to hit your three star usually. Uh, all right, Bastion Harp, take it if you're playing Bastions. It usually allows you to play some stall S builds, but you know, take if you want to play Bastions can be a generally fun augment to take as well. Blood Money. Blood money, you typically want to take, uh, you want to take this as early as possible. I think you can only be offered it at 2-1 anyways. But when you take blood money, you want to lose streak if you can. You don't have to, but in general, gold is more valuable the earlier you get it in the game because it'll stack up, you gain interest. So generally, you want to try to lose streak. It's okay if you don't, but yeah. Typically, you take this when you are weak and you want to lose streak or if you want to force a build and you just sell your board, open for it, that sort of thing. Okay, branching out. Branching out is actually uh, generally just a really good augment. Uh, right now, Earth is a very powerful legend at the time we're making this video, and there are a lot of good emblems. You can take this whenever you like, especially if emblems are powerful in the meta and you are willing to play a lot of different types of boards. Bronze ticket, um, you typically just take it if you're rerolling. So every four shops, you get a free refresh. Take it if you want to reroll. Okay, Bruiser Heart, you can generally take this whenever, or you can take this to force a lot of builds. Like, uh, you know, you can take this to force like the Cho Biden build if that is meta at the time. But generally, this is fine to take because you can just play like random Scion at the end of the game. You can take this for tempo and yeah, and just play random Scion. You'll be good to go. Buried Treasures, this is Ezreal's augment. And this is... Um, generally just a fine augment to take it's especially good if you are playing a duo carry build and i think every single build in this game is duo carry now so this, this that's why it's a generally fine augment it's especially good if you have upgraded units in the early game and it can help you win streak caretaker's ally that's bard's augment there are two ways to play caretaker's ally if you take this you can reroll the two cost right uh so if you get something that's a good reroll build at the time you go oh awesome you just slow roll on six and then once you get close you could push levels to seven and eight and you will guarantee you hit it or you can just hit your three star on six that's fine um if you need it for tempo so it's good that way but what a lot of people don't know is you just you don't have to reroll. So if you get a two cost that is not a good reroll build, you don't have to commit to a bad reroll build. You could just use this for tempo. It's basically a free two star unit at level five or level six and just take it and then just sell that unit later. You know, you're going to make like 10 gold throughout the game. That's fine. Um, it's not the best way to play it. But, you know, you don't just like play a bad build because the game gave you these free units. So you, you don't have to do that. But yeah, reroll it if it's strong. And then if not, just use it for use it for the econ, use it for the tempo. Challenger heart, take if you want to play challengers. Component uh, buffet. Um, component buffet, generally fine all the time, especially if you are trying to force a build um, and you need like very strict components. Uh, that can be very nice. Consistency. Um, this is really good when you're smurfing. 
Um, if you're playing in an EWO that is below your skill level or you like you just you started your rank grind uh, late, this is really good because you can guarantee win streak. But uh, <laughs> the other times you take it is if you are going to lose streak guaranteed, like you just take this in open fort um, or your board looks insanely strong and you think you can like hard win streak, uh, take this for sure and you'll be good to go. Okay, cutting corners. This is generally fine to take. Uh, it's really good early game. It gives you some extra tempo because uh, minus three XP in the early game is a lot. So you'll hit your level five, your level six, earlier than everybody else and uh and it's it's going to be cheaper for you so this is a nice little subtle econ augment uh cybernetic bulk uh take this if you if you want cybernetic bulk you have a lot of extra items especially when you're on portals that give you extra items and you can uh, commit items in a bunch of different places if you already have like three items committed on one unit in the early game and then you get this offered you shouldn't even get this offered um in, the, in that scenario but if, if you do and you don't and you already have all your items committed maybe don't take it but yeah especially take this if you have a lot of extra items same thing applies for all the other cybernetic ones so i'm not really going to go into them cybernetic leech though i'll just say one thing about it it's especially good and like stat loaded uh traits like noxus it's very good in noxus because the one stat that you don't get from noxus is omnivamp so it can be nice in that Demossi Heart, play this if you want to play Demossians. Gunner Heart, play if you want to play Gunners. Uh, Harm Assist. Um, Harm Assist, just take this if you need healing and you can't get it. You know, like you're playing like a Zier and you really want some healing on him and you weren't able to build a Gunblade or whatever. Uh, then take Harm Assist. That'll be fine to go or good to go. All the good stuff. Healing Orbs. Uh, healing Orbs is just generally a fine augment to take. It especially helps you stall. So install boards like Aphelios and um azir can be quite nice i also really like this in challengers because challengers you're just sort of like really mowing them over and then just getting that little heal on fiora who's going to be in melee range can be quite nice so i like it in challengers as well inconsistency um inconsistency is generally a fine augment to take i really like this one i'll take this one all the time you don't want to take this in open fort obviously um and you don't want to take this if you look like you're going to just smash the lobby but if you end up smashing the lobby and you take inconsistency um, that's fine, <laughs> you know, because you gain a little bit of extra gold when you're building up your win streak and then you're win streaking. So that's fine. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so generally don't take this if you look like the weakest player in the lobby and everyone else is playing tempo. Uh, but in generally, this is just a great augment. Uh, Indomitable Will. Um, Indomitable Will, I think, is really good in challengers because, again, you are just like jumping all over them you're attacking you're killing things really fast um, but other than that it's just a fine augment to take especially if you're playing melee carries uh, like nyla or something like that you don't have an rfc um, and i really like it in challengers as well but it's generally just a fine augment to take uh, invoker art play if you're playing invokers ionia play if you're playing ionias iron assets uh, this is just a generally fine augment to take in the early game it's especially good if you have like an item opener and you you got like four items and you can get a lot of gold you get a little bit of gold injection and especially if you have upgraded units you can really use this to win streak guarantee a very strong item um because it is a component anvil can be nice uh jeweled lotus um take this if you missed taking crit on your primary carry like let's say you're playing like invokers and you weren't able to build jeweled gauntlet on your karma and you're like oh okay awesome jeweled lotus i can take this and i can build a death cap on my karma and be fine to go um so yeah take that if you missed out on crit and you want to have crit juggernaut heart play if you're playing juggernauts late game specialist uh you want to take this if you know that you can get the level nine um so this is like a win more augment a lot of times so if you are like win streaking and you're like oh i have a level nine angle and then you get this offered you're like oh okay well, let's go level nine um so if you know you're gonna go level nine or you have the angle to go level nine you take this you don't take this and go like okay i i'm gonna go level nine now like you, you gotta have the angle first okay latent forge um latent forge is just generally fine to take especially if orn augments uh orn items or artifacts are strong at that time um just pay attention to the meta and know if those, those are strong generally a fine augment to take ldp so long distance spouse this is generally fine in every build every build has duo carries but it's especially good when you're playing a vertical so the best example of this is sorks so sorks you gain a lot of ap and so let's say you're playing like six orcs and you gain like the extra 80 AP or whatever it is. And then you have your uh, Silco and your Velkaz on opposite sides um, and, you're, and you're getting the LDP value on you. They will share that bonus AP. So it was like, it's like you have 10 Sork, you know? So it's very powerful in those types of scenarios. Good in things like challengers as well. You know, you'll have your uh, Kaisa over here, your Fior over here. And then Fior actually can use AP scaling. So she get the AP from Kaisa and the little bit of AD that she has. And then uh, vice versa, we'll go back. And even though Kaisa doesn't really use AD, she does attack very fast. So she can make use of that. So it's especially good in verticals, but it's pretty much good in every build because every build requires a duo carry usually. Uh, misconnections. This is generally a pretty good augment, especially if you if you miss the one cost. So you get this offered at three two, and you um, you know you, you're one off a of Samira two, and that Samira two would just help you give a lot of tempo, and you're one off a 
Magnolia or something like that, this can be good to go um, and, and get you some good stuff. So missing link after your, I don't even know this one, after you refresh your shop 40 times, gain a uh, copy of a tier five unit. Have any of you guys ever been offered this? Is this, is this new? I've never been offered this. Um, <laughs> so take this if you're about to if you're about to roll down and you want a five cost. Uh, gain a copy of each tier five after forty shop refreshes. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> a copy of each tier five unit. Is this in the game? Okay. Um, all right. Noxus heart. Take this. You're putting Noxus on a roll. Take this if you are rerolling, um, especially if you are going to force like a one cost reroll, um, or if you're about to roll down on two cost. Uh, that sort of thing. All right. One, two, three. This is generally a fine augment to take, especially if you don't have direction. This is Caitlin's uh, tier one augment. If you don't have a lot of direction, you don't know what you're going to play. You're like, man, I just have all these pairs. I don't know what to play. Uh, take this, and this can like, give you some direction. Uh, but generally, I don't really like this augment that much. Uh, one, two, five. This is a generally fine augment to take, especially if five costs are really strong in the meta at that time, and you feel like you can make use of a lot of five costs. Then This can be very, very, very good. Uh, Pandora's Bench. Uh, Pandora's Bench, you want to take this if you want to reroll. Um, this would be very effective in rerolling. This also, it can give you a license to get a two uh, three star four cost especially if you're going to play an uncontested build so if you know you're going to play uncontested build let's say aphelios is not a very popular carry at the time and you look in your lobby and you go okay no one's going to play aphelios let's take this augment and you're already playing aphelios and then you look for the aphelios three and you'll probably get it uh so whenever you take this you want to like you know you're playing aphelios trying to get aphelios you want to have four costs sitting on the pandora spot and if you like upgrade like let's say you're playing aphelios you can make a Zaya two and then put it on put it on the hex and just and just uh, put it on the spot and then wait for it to turn into an Aphelios. So that's usually a pretty effective way to do it. So yeah, you want to go for three stars whenever you take this. You can also use it for tempo, but it's like really hit or miss. Uh, Pandora's items generally you just take this if your items are gar <laughs> like the item drop you get in the early game is just garbage. You can take this or if we're in a degen meta where you want to force a build every single game. So let's say you know like on PVE right now we had the RFC thing where everyone was going double or triple RFC Nyla. Um, they changed that. It's not, it was bugged. Um, so like people were taking Pandora's bench cause they were forcing that build and they thought it was pretty strong. So it takes us if you want to force builds or if your items are just garbage pumping up, uh, pumping up as master ease augment. Generally, this is a fine augment to take. It's pretty good in almost every single build except for like sorks. Um, yeah, you can just generally take this There's a lot of attack speed carries. If you take this augment, you're probably going to play around like a Felios or a uh, Azir or something like that. And there's a lot of attack speed carries. So, um, yeah, pretty good. Recombobulator. Recombobulator is best when you don't have um, a super strong board. Well, that's not that's not exactly true. If you're already playing a really strong board and like you have really like, you know, like you have like four Sharima mid game and it's all upgraded, then you probably don't want to take this. And you have like good items and you have like really good directional plays here. You probably don't want to take this. But if you have a two star three cost or a four cost on your board, it doesn't necessarily have to be two star, but if you have a two star three cost or and a four cost on your board or multiple two star three costs, this can be really good because you'll take this on three two and it'll turn into or a four two and it'll turn into four cost two stars or a five cost. So take it in those those type of scenarios. It can be very, very, very nice. Um, red buff, generally a great augment to take, especially if you haven't committed um, healing, uh, healing, reducing items already. It's especially good in Noxus opener because, um, especially if you're playing around Cassiopeia, because Cassiopeia deals more damage when they are already healing reduced. So this can be very, very, very good, especially in Noxus opener. Generally a fine augment to take. Risky moves. Typically the indicator to take risky moves is if you are strong. If you start the game and you look strong and you go, okay, I can go, I can go ahead and forego 20 of my health because I'm not really gonna lose a lot of rounds and I'll take the extra 30 gold in seven rounds. It can be very nice. Additionally, if there is, if we're in a very strict meta, um, like let's say there's like only one or two builds that are really good, um, you know, we're in a really bad patch, then you can take this in a losing position as well, as long as you know that if you can hit that board, you're going to win out. So typically take it if you have a strong early game or if we're in a really bad meta. Um, and you want, and you're going to force the, force the build rogue heart, take if you want to play rogue, Sharima, take if you want to take Sharima. Silver spoon is really, really good augment. I really like this augment. It gives you a lot of early game tempo. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to win, but it essentially gets you to those, uh, you know, everybody pre levels and then you go, you're level five going into after the first carousel, right? Um, it'll get you that to that level five threshold without ever having to spend gold. So it actually makes you a lot of econ. So don't sleep on, it says just 10 XP. It actually gives you like 30 gold basically over the course of the game if you don't end up paying for XP. And if you have a really strong early game, you can get like a really early level six and baby level and just punish the lobby. 
Slay Heart, take your brain slayers. Social distancing, this is a generally fine augment to take in any build, except for when you're playing like eight Bastion because you want all your Bastions up there. So if you have like a really big front line and like, or you, like Noxus builds a lot of times aren't super good with this because you're already getting a lot of the stats and a lot of the Noxus units are front line units. You want them positioned on the front line. Uh, so it's generally fine in every build. It's really good in challengers and Shurimans. I really like it in those builds because challengers gain a lot of attack speed, but they don't gain a lot of other stats. So if you can stack attack speed on top of damage, that is very powerful combo. Same thing with Shurima. Shurima, you gain a lot of HP, you gain a lot of attack speed, but you don't gain any other stats. So I really like it in both of those builds specifically. Sword cart, take if you're playing Sorks. Spoilers of War, you want to take this when you're presented a strong early game and you play like a psycho. You play extremely aggressive, but you don't just take this and then start playing aggressive. You need... An, you need something strong to play around and this can be like especially spoilers of war two and three it can be like a free first if you have a really strong early game and you look at the rest of the lobby they look weak take the augment and, and play around that uh stationary support i really like this augment so you gain a training dummy which is a lot of health for your board um it can give you a lot of power in the early game and then after eight rounds it is equipped with a random support item and a lot of the support items are very 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 good i really like this augment so um, you can generally just take this whenever you'd like, but it especially gives you a lot of tempo. I wouldn't take this if you want to lose streak, like if you're going to open fort and lose streak, because this adds a lot of health to your board. It makes it harder for you to lose streak. Uh, Tiny Titans, this is generally fine to take whenever, really. Um, you can take this at the beginning of the game, especially if the meta is very flexible and you don't like need to guarantee items. And you can take this and you can lose streak. Um, that can be good to go. Or you can take this and win streak if you already have good items. Like let's say Rage Blade is the best item to play around and you already have a Rage Blade. Okay, I already have my core item. Let's go, let's keep going. Additionally, uh, this is very good to take if you lost streak early game and then you have your items uh, you have your items that you want and you take this on three two like oh okay cool i got 30 more health i feel good to go i can stack an extra couple rounds and then roll on four five or, or three five or whatever you want to do um, so it's especially good when you already have your core items for the build that you've committed to transfusion generally fine augmented take a lot of people will take transfusion and they will lose streak on purpose and then will spike mid game so a lot of people will take like transfusion two or three or one and they'll, uh, one is not nearly as powerful, but they'll intentionally lose. And then because they know that they can spike really hard at like 40 HP, something like that. And then they can win streak after that. Um, generally when you take transfusion, you want to play like stall type of builds. You don't just take this and play whatever build. Usually you'll play around like Sharimas. They scale really well with HP, play around like Bastions, play around Juggernauts, you know, stall type of builds, like a Felios, like a Zier, that sort of thing. Very, very, very good with that. And generally you want to lose streak when you take this, but you know, it's fine. If you end up win streaking, then it's okay. We're win streaking. And then you're going to lose a lot of rounds and then spike really hard later. That's fine. Um, unburden uh, your units without items gain 30% uh, attack speed. So yeah, I really like this if you don't have items committed. And did, so did I read this one wrong then? All natural, your champions are no items. Oh, it's the same thing. Um, I just uh, counted it as attack speed <laughs> earlier. Same thing. Okay, unified resistance. I, I, I thought the other augment was the other augment. Unified resistance, generally a fine augment to take, especially good when you're on level six, or if you have a support dummy in your level five, you can get this get this active. So generally fine augment to take, Vanquisher, take it between Vanquisher. Young, wild, and free. Take this if you are very far ahead and you don't look like you're gonna be losing anytime soon. You can take this and you, uh, you know, the downside of being high HP is you can't uh, get the item component you want. Um, but you know, take this and get whatever item component you want. Zon Heart, take it if you're taking, uh, if you're playing Zons. And then now we're onto the gold tier. I'm going to skip the repeats because we already talked about them. Uh, but other than that, I'll talk about the other ones. All right, cut above, gain a death weight, champion hold, or uh, gain a death weight. Um, uh, cut above. You guys can generally take this if you, uh, if, if death weight is a good item, or if you have a strong early game and you think you can make a lot of this gold, then take this. It's very, it's very good when death weight is good. Uh, adrenaline rush take this for playing juggernauts um we already talked about these all that shimmers uh, you get a shimmer scale item there are a bunch of different shimmer scale items you can open up just look up shimmer scale items set 9.5 i don't have them all memorized they change some of them uh they help help in gold generation it this is generally better the earlier you take it in the game if you get this offered on three two it's usually not very good um but really good on two one to just make some extra gold especially if you do have a strong early game and you know you can make use of the items uh gain atoma trades generally a fine augment to take whenever you like right now because uh emblems are very strong right now um, cool. Um, all these we already talked about. Built different. Uh, let's quickly talk about built different. When you take built different, if you don't know how to play this, you just play around random two stars. So like really strong two stars. I don't know what the perfect built different build is right now. I just really didn't test this augment, um, so I can't tell you exactly what to play. But you will just play upgraded units that don't have overlapping synergy. So a lot of times you'll just be playing like a two star Samira and a two star Cassio, but you don't get Noxus in and play like a two star. 
misfortune or something like that, you know, and then a random two star tank. You just want to play random two stars and you'll be good to go. And then late game, you'll play random two star four costs and five costs and that sort of thing. So you might end up having like an Aphelios and Zaya duo carry, even though their traits don't overlap at all. Um, and you can be good to go. So something like that. Okay. Barry treasures already talked about it. Capricious forge. Um, so this is really good if you have a very powerful unit on your board that doesn't have any items. So let's say you're playing like Vanquishers and you don't have any items, you hit a Nyla and you don't have items to commit to her yet, you built Zaya items. You can be like, oh, okay, I'll just put this on my Nyla. You can be good to go. You can also just put this on a random tank if you don't have tank items and just commit it to your tank. You can be good to go. Um, Caretaker's favor, this is Bard's Augment. This is just generally fine to take. Uh, whenever you take this, you, um, you know, it doesn't really change how you play. You do want to eventually get to level eight. doesn't mean you need a fast eight or anything like that, but just remember whenever you play, because a lot of times you end up having to roll on seven. And then sometimes when I take this, I take this augment a lot. I'll forget that I get one at, I get an anvil at eight. So just remember you want to try to get the level eight, probably on five one. So you have those two anvils, the one that you get from the dragon. Um, and then one that you get, uh, from bards augment there. Um, Okay, don't need to talk about these. Combat caster, especially good if your units are going to be casting a lot. It's extremely good. If your uh, your units are like really low mana, maybe you're playing like Noxus Open or that sort of thing. Very good in that because you're, you're really low mana. Very, very, very nice. Um, can be also fine in Challengers, but Challengers have their own little version of this, but it's extremely good in Invokers because Invokers are casting constantly. So the, uh, a lot of times this is a good indicator. If I have like an Invoker Opener or an AP Opener, if I get this offer, this is a good indicator to play Invokers. Um, Contagion, generally fine whenever. Uh, just a generally good augment. Already talked about all the cybernetics. Um, dedication. So dedication is good if your strict vertical is very strong. So something like Sorks, like the strict vertical getting the six Sorks threshold is very strong. Playing something like Sharimas, if you're already playing around this, uh, if you can get this active immediately, then take it um, if your vertical is very strong. Defensive dash, take it if you're playing challengers. Demon Flare. So Demon Flare makes Swain very, very, very powerful. So you can take this and play Reroll Swain if Reroll Swain happens to be very powerful in the meta. Additionally, you can just take this, commit a War Mogs to your Swain. Uh, you just want to stack HP on him and maybe a little bit of resist and that sort of thing. That'll make him extremely strong. Um, you can just play Tempo. Uh, Swain is an extremely strong unit, and you can just take this, and that can allow you to be very strong on stage two, stage three, stage four, and then like you can just like not, you can just have a dead augment late game, and just use the Tempo to get a really good placement, um, or you can reroll Swain. Uh, double Trouble. This is really good when you're rerolling, um, especially the most popular build to take Double Trouble is going to be in uh, Talia. So you have like the two Talias, the two sets, the two Nautilus, the two Kianas, the two two TFs, that sort of thing. Um, so it's especially good when you're rerolling um, or units that are very good when you have multiple copies of them, like something like something like Cassiopeia. It's very good when you have two of them because one will heal, heal and reduce and the other one will get the bonus damage and the bonus damage. Uh, you know, having like two Samiras is really good. They stack their armor shed on top of each other. So scenarios like that are pretty good as well. But generally, you won't take this when you're rerolling. Uh, don't need to talk about this. Don't need to talk about this. Endurance training, your units permanently gain 18 health when they kill. This is really good, especially when you're playing Cho Bidem, like Cho Reroll. Um, it's a, it's really good if you're going to reroll. So you already have the units you're going to play the whole game. Uh, generally take this, but it's, it's not a good general augment. Escort quest, you need to take this if you're really, really, really far ahead. Um, and you can gain some gold. So if you like look really strong, like you have a really high roll, high roll opener, take the escort quest. And uh, you generally can, I like to position this like, second to the last row um so i guess that's like fourth row or something in front of my uh carry so if my tank line dies it will protect my back line and i can still win streak or whatever and it actually gives a lot of health to your board but if you're playing against somebody who's super weak you know and if people are open 40 and that sort of thing you'll just make this gold for free and then and then in the people you reverse the strong people it'll protect your win streak so uh put, take this if you're really strong for your heart take this if you want to play for all yards or if you're already playing ash and you need some um uh, shred and sunder that sort of thing you're already playing sejuani and you're like oh okay nice i got this um but you generally don't take this in like force rail yard uh frequent flyer every uh after you refresh eight shops your uh your cost is reduced so take this if you're going to reroll or you're about to send you know you're about to send like 60 gold um then this can this could be effective for you gargantuan uh, you typically you take this if you already have a titan's resolve committed and then you'll get two titans and then after that you'll play like a frontline carry like something like darius mordecai or fiora something like that uh gifts from the fallen this is generally fine in every single board um, because your carry or your secondary carry will usually be the last one alive. Um, so it's really good in like Sharimas. You know, Sharimas lack stats like this. They don't have these stats. Um, and, and Challengers, because Challengers don't have these stats either, but it's generally fine in every single board. Uh, Glacial Breeze, take this if you're already playing Frail Yards. Uh, Harmasis, we already talked about this, Healing Arms. Hustler. Um, so Hustler, 
you want to take this and play a very, 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 very aggressive. So the two ways you can play this is you can hyper roll. Um, you can hyper roll like a one cost reroll. If you have like a really good angle to play that, you know, get this offered onto one. Um, you could do that if you have a really good angle and there's a lot of good one cost rerolls, or you can choose this to like spam levels and then just roll it anytime you, anytime you need to, you roll. So if you're, if you're sitting on pairs, you're sitting on one cost pairs or two cost pairs and you're level five. Okay. Let's roll until I hit them. Um, and then let's go to six and let's hit our three costs and our two costs and that sort of thing. So you just want to play really, 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 really aggressive with your gold. Usually very good for top four. Idealism. Idealism is generally fine, especially if you just need an item to win streak. Like a lot of times I'll take this if I have a really strong early game or a really strong mid game or something like that. And I just need a, one more item and that can really push me over to edge to win streak. It'd be very good in that situation. Or, um, you know, if you just have a lot of units that are good with Hodge um, and you already built a Hodge, like let's say you're playing like, um, I don't know, challengers, and you are playing the Fury reroll with a Fiora carry as well, then, you know, idealism, Hodge, and you already have that committed to your Nefiri, and then you get an extra one for your Fiora. That can be really great. Um, infusion, your units restore 20 mana. This is very good in AP builds, especially Sorks. Uh, Sorks don't have innate uh, mana gain. Or if you're playing like four invokers, this can be very good as well. It's like you have six invokers. Very strong. Um, cool. Jeweled Lotus, especially good in AP builds. It can be good in all builds, but it's like, this feels really, really, really nice if you're playing like Sharimas and you're duo carrying or like, you know, like the, the strategist build, right? And you're duo carrying like um, Azir and what's his face, Silco. Uh, then it's very, very, very strong. This is really good in Invokers and Sorks, especially if you haven't committed AP, uh, like Jeweled Gauntlet yet. And then you can just build a Guard Breaker and have like 70% crit chance. It feels very good. Um, and this goes for all the Jeweled Lotus tiers. Okay, know your enemy, just generally good. Uh, last stand, uh, this is good if you're already low and you're spiking and, and you know you can spike. Uh, this this can be really good. Uh, it can make you very, very, very strong. Okay, uh, library card, you just can't into much rates, cool. Uh, LDP already talked about it, loving invocation, take if you're playing invokers, very, very powerful if, if you're playing invokers. And this usually will want you to commit to vertical invokers. If you were going to play two or four, try to commit to six. You can play four though, that's fine, but the more, the better. Magic Wand, generally fine to take in any AP build, especially if you need a lot of rod components, just generally fine. Like you're playing Sharimas, Invokers, Sorks, that sort of thing. Uh, Mana Burn, this is generally a fine augment to take, especially if you already have a Shroud. Um, then you can have two Shrouds. You can Shroud their whole board. The whole board is burning. It's very, very, very good. Um, I took this the other day. It was a free first um, when I was playing Invokers. Uh, Martyr, uh, this is very good in the situations where we talked about um, the other healing one being good. Um, healing Orbs. Uh, so uh, same thing, pretty much the same thing. Um, cool. Yeah, very good install builds. Yeah, very good with Shreemas. You know, Shreemas have a lot of health. Very good with Bruisers. Bruisers have a lot of health. Uh, Metabolic Accelerator. Generally, uh, this is very good pretty much all the time. It's fine. Uh, but generally, you take this, you want to lose streak, especially, or you could take this, you'd be a very good indicator, just like, all right, sell my whole board. I'm going to lose streak, use this econ to force a build. Um, so that can be very good in that situation. Um, yeah. So you typically, if you have a weak early game, you want to utilize this. But if you have a strong early game and you take this, okay. <laughs> you win streak and you're at 100 health. That, that's fine too. But generally, you want to be taking it when you're streaking. Morning light, take it if you're playing Bastions. Um, not today. Take this if you already have an Edge of Night and you're going to commit it uh, to another one, especially good in like Challengers, that sort of thing. Um, units that are really good with uh, Edge of Night, you know, like, yeah, just frontline carry is a really good Edge of Night. So, especially if you already have one committed and, and that sort of thing, it can be very, very, very good. Um, if you put on Challengers, it's kind of like you have eight Challenger. If you have six Challenger, the extra attack speed. So, it can be quite nice. Uh, cool. Um, overcharged mana front take if you're playing sorks this is usually a good indicator to play more sorks um, we already talked about pandora's items parting gifts when a unit dies they pass a temporary copy of their items to the next closest and shields them this is generally a good augment um, especially if you have a lot of frontline items committed generally just great patient study generally a fine augment um, obviously you get this i think you only get this offered on two one Typically, you want to try to lose streak, but if you don't lose streak, the two XP gain is fine too. Um, so this is nice. Helps you get an early level six or an early level seven, and you can be good to go. So you just hit those level thresholds a little bit earlier. Typically, you want to lose streak, but it's fine if you don't. Um, these are a trait specific portable forge. Um, there's three portable forges here for some reason. Um, it's because it's actually this one. You get to choose between uh, one of two unique artifacts. So this is Orn's augment. This is generally fine if the artifacts are good. Um, and you're willing to play a lot of them. So this is generally a fine thing to take. Pumping up already talked about. Ravenous Hunter, very specific. These are specific. Return on investment. Um, return on investment is good if you are about to send it. You know you're about to roll like 50 gold. Take this, you get a tactician scrum, especially if you can utilize a tactician scrum. Some boards actually can't utilize a tactician scrum that well. So um, cool, rich get richer. You want to take this the earlier you get it in the game, the better. It's especially good if you already were going to open fort, like you don't have a super strong early game. You don't need to uh, push levels, that sort of thing. Take this, open fort, and typically you're going to 
you know, send it, like go a really fast early seven um, and send it down. Or if you have a decently okay board and you can go fast eight, then go fast eight and send it as long as you know that you can hit a board and win out. Okay, um, this is a trait specific. Um, rising Infamy, I'll talk about this one because it is a new one. This is good. This is a very good econ augment. Uh, so take this if you're playing Bilge Waters. Um, and the more Bilge Waters, the better because if you have seven Bilge Waters on your board, there's are seven of them that can trigger this effect. And the more that you trigger the effect, the better the chest gets. So uh, yeah, so I, when I take this, it's usually a really good indicator to play Vertical Bilge Water. But late game, you can drop out of Vertical Bilge Water if you have a better board you can make. But the more Bilge Waters, the better to scale this up as quick as possible. Um, cool. Salvage bin, gain a random completed item now. And then after selling, um, they're selling the components break bar. This is really good. If you're going to commit my, my mouse just died. If you're going to commit, um, items for tempo, but like those aren't really the items you want from your in-game board. And you're like, okay, I can use these components to make better items later. So it can be quite nice there, but I don't really like taking this one that much. Cool. Scoped weapons. This is really good in a lot of different boards. It's uh, especially good if you know you're going to play a unit like Nyla, if you're going to play Mordekaiser. So really good on frontline carries. You want extra range. Reroll Graves is really good with this. It's also really good with um, Azir. Azir, so he doesn't have to leave the corner. Like a lot of people build RFC on Azir right now. One, because it gives you the 12% bonus damage and the upfront attack speed. So does this upfront attack speed. But it's really so Azir never has to move. He's just sitting here. Sharima, Sharima, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's really good on all those units. Sharpie Inventions, um, this is really good if you haven't committed item compo I fully completed items and you can spread out your items a lot. Very good for that, very good for tempo. Uh, Sentinel Spirit, Ionia thing. Uh, shoplifting, after, at the start of each turn, gain the highest tier champion in your shop for free. Uh, this is fine, I don't really like this augment, but this is fine. I don't really have much to say about it. <laughs> Shrima's Legacy, extremely good if you know you're going to be playing Shrima's. Uh, very, very, very good. Uh, silver Ticket, each time your shop is refreshed, you have 30% chance to gain a free shop refresh. So take this if you're going to reroll or you're about you're, you're about to roll 70 gold. Like you really need to hit. Um, it can be good in both of those scenarios. Um, don't need to talk about these. Slide of Hand, gain a Thieves Glove. Champions holding the Thieves Glove, gain 200 health and 20% attack speed. This can be pretty good if you are playing, uh, especially if you're playing like a vertical or something. You're, like, you're playing a bunch of Vanquishers and like you don't have items to put on um, Nyla. You you committed Zaya items. Uh, then you can take this and put the items on Nyla. You know, she can utilize the attack speed, the health. Very, very, very good. Especially good on verticals or if you have a duo or a third carry that just doesn't have any items. It can be very good there. Already talked about social distancing. Uh, already talked about these. Stable evolution. Take if you're playing um, voids. can be fine. Stars are born. This is Caitlyn's augment. This is a very powerful augment at the time of making this video. It's been very powerful for a while. Uh, so generally when you take this, a lot of times you'll be offered this on 2-1. And if you're playing Caitlyn, you usually want to you don't have to do this, but there's two ways you can play this. You can pre-level so that you have better odds to hit more two cost in your pool. And then, um, or you can not pre-level and you can have a re-roll angle uh, because let's say you already have a two-star Cho'Gath and you can buy another free two-star Cho'Gath and then you can buy a two-star Kassin or something or a Vi, right? Uh, generally, um, this is this is how you do it. Generally, the two cost, you want it to be the frontliner. So like if you get like a two-star Swain and then you want to buy another unit that goes with Swain, like a Malzahar, a Cassio, a Samira, usually the two cost frontliners are stronger than the two cost backliners in the early game. But you know, sometimes you want to buy the Jinx, sometimes you want to buy the Ash, that sort of thing. That can be fine too. But you take this and then you want to win streak. If you don't win streak, it's fine because we gained six gold. And when you buy these units, a two-star unit, two-star two cost usually costs six gold but it's only gonna cost you two gold. So you're actually gonna make a net gain of 12 gold uh, whenever you're doing this. So you don't have to win streak, but you do want to. Anyways, all right, stationary support, gain a training dummy, and then they have one random support item equipped. I really like this one, um, especially if there's a lot of good support items that are good and your board can utilize a lot of them or you aren't committed to a specific board yet and then you can play around the support item. Very, very, very powerful. You gain a lot of health for your board. Um, don't need to talk about these. You just take them if you're playing the trait. Um, support cash. So uh, this is an armory where you get this uh, pick from support items. Take this if you're comfortable playing a lot of support items. Um, cool. Tactical superiority. You're playing this if you're, uh, I will talk about this one because if you're playing strategist and you have a lot of traits active, it's going to be very good. But if you're playing like seven Sharima and you're not, or six Sharima and you're not um, going to be able to get a lot of other traits active, then it can be not as good. I'm going to turn my lights off real quick because it is so bright in here now. Um, <laughs> then, then it can be not as good. So take this if you're playing a lot of traits and you're also playing strategists. So, um, you know, you're actually playing two strategists uh, or you're playing like two Sharima, but you're playing like a bunch of juggernaut strategists, orcs, that sort of thing. Um, cool. The boss. Um, I will talk about this one a little bit. 
You can take this and reroll set. This can be a good indicator to play reroll set to Leah, that sort of thing. You can also just same thing as Swain. You can take this for tempo. If you know set's gonna be on your end game board um, or you just wanna take this for tempo, get the free set here real quick and then set will be very strong carry your early and mid game. Can be quite nice as well for that. So same idea as, re as, as Demon of for Swain. Uh, three's company gain four random tier three champions this is really good especially where three costs are very strong in the meta um so you can just generally take this anytime that happens um also just if you don't have a lot of direction can give you some direction you can sell the other units make some econ back all good to go um th there's uh three's a crowd sorry uh take this if you have a lot of if you have a lot of tier three units on your board like something like noxus or rogues a lot of times will have a lot of three cost on the board um so yeah to get in that situation titanic shrink take if you're playing bruisers tons of stats this is generally just a fine augment to take especially good in those boards where you don't have where you're missing these stats like i like this in shirima i like this in challengers but generally just a fine augment to take total domination we already know trade sector um, trade sector is just generally a fine augment so a lot of people play this augment wrong and i feel like everyone's taking crazy pills and just forgot uh generally you take trade sector and this is a very good tempo augment so you don't take it to reroll. You can reroll two and three costs. Like you get this offered on two one. Typically, you take this and you can push levels and you can get your upgrades for free. You can play very very high tempo and then you can reroll two and three costs. It's very good if you're rolling two and three costs. You do not want to take it if you're rolling one cost unless you're on a portal where you just got a lot of gold injection and it's going to be okay. The reason why you don't take it on one cost rerolls is because typically when you're playing one cost rerolls, you're going to be very weak until you hit your three stars. Um, so typically you're going to like loss streak, you're going to make as much econ as you can, and then you're going to roll really hard on three, one, and you're going to hit your three stars or you don't hit your three stars, or maybe you hit three stars on three, two or something like that. But when you take trade sector, you actually hit a lot of two star units, but you're not pushing levels. So you're not strong enough to win streak. And then you're holding a lot of upgraded units on your bench. And then before anybody writes this stupid ass comment, cause I get this comment every time I talk about this. Oh, you could, what you're forgetting is you could just hold your upgraded units on your bench and just lose streak. Okay. So you took a gold augment. You took a gold augment so you could hold upgraded units on your bench, griefing your econ, and then forcing the loss streak. Yeah, that sounds smart. Um, <laughs> anyways, like you don't have any econ and you're losing. Okay, that's that's really, really, really awesome and smart. Um, so yeah, that that is, take this and you play tempo. But if you're on uh, portals where you, there's just a lot of gold injection or you're all, you're already really close to your upgraded unit, this can be fine on one cost rerolls. But typically you take it for tempo, play two and three cost rerolls, or you just take it for tempo and you just have it the whole game. It's really nice. Um, already talked about transfusion, too healthy. Take this if you're playing a lot of two costs on your board, especially if you're rerolling two costs, like that Tilia set build can be very, 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 very good. Um, it's also good in like juggernaut builds because there's a lot of two cost juggernauts. If you're playing like juggernaut strategists, you're, you're gonna have Swain, Warwick, um, set and you can be good to go. Uh, unified resistance already talked about this. Unstable Yordle delivery. This is not in the game because there's no Yordles. Um, cool. Uh, don't need to talk about any of these. What doesn't kill you? So typically you want to take take this and open fort. You gain extra gold. So you just make sure that you lost streak. And by the time you're three five, you'll have two extra components and a ton of gold. Um, so you just want to lose streak. Okay, uh, wins a war, same idea as Demon Flare and Sets Augment. You take this, especially if you want to reroll Invokers or you're, you're doing some reroll Demacia shit, um, you can take this and you have a very strong Galio, put some tank items on him, you're good to go. Or you can play this for tempo, it can give you some decent tempo. Uh, you have my bow, very good in attack speed based builds, Azir, Aphelios, um, Vanquishers, that sort of thing. Uh, you have my sword, very good in AD focus boards, Aphelios, Vanquishers, that sort of thing, Noxus sometimes, be good to go. Um, all right, now on to the prismatics. So prismatics, Toma traits. Um, let's talk a little bit more about Toma traits, I guess, because I'll just talk to you about one tailoring rule. I don't memorize all the tailoring rules, um, but if you have six or seven traits active, um, not active, sorry, just on your board, and it, you have to have fought a combat round, um, it doesn't just trigger if you just put the units on your board and then pop the tome. Um, so you need to have six or seven traits listed. They don't have to be active. Then you'll have one, at least one uh, trait that is tailored that is going to be something that is on your board right now. If not, you can just open pop this. So like, for example, right now at the time we're making this video, um, Earth is very powerful because just to just tomes are really strong. Like, emblems are super, super strong. And so if you can get two of the same one, that's really powerful, but you all, you just need to know, if you're gonna take a song, you need to know the trees of builds. So for example, like Juggernaut and Strategist go together. Juggernaut and Sharima go together. So knowing that, and when I pop these and I get a juggernaut emblem, I go, okay, I got a juggernaut emblem. Now on the next one, I'm looking for a juggernaut. I'm looking for Sharima. I'm looking for strategist, right? 
Um, so you need to know the pairings that work well together if you're gonna take an augment like this. Um, we don't need to talk about these. Binary airdrop, so this can be a decent tempo, um, especially if you have a lot of items but you haven't committed three items to anybody. Um, you can get a lot of power and you just spread out your items, two items on everybody, and you'll be good to go. Birthday present. Uh, I don't really like this augment too much. Sometimes it's really good. So you gain two gold and a two-star champion every time you up. Every time you level, the champion's tier is f minus four um, from your tier. So whenever you, uh, so just think about this. Once you hit level eight, you will get a free four-cost two-star. And so typically you take this and you play very aggressive, play up tempo, and you want to just keep pushing levels. Ideally, you don't have to roll and you just keep pushing levels. Um, but you know, it doesn't play out like that sometimes, homie. Um, and then eventually, if you go nine, you get a free five cost. So it's especially good if there's a lot of, uh, if the meta is really flexible and you play a lot of different different units and a lot of things are strong. If the meta is really good, this is generally fine to take. But I don't know, this one's kind of weird. Um, blinding speed, gain a rapid fire cannon and Gwen Sue's Rage Blade. Take this if you're playing builds where you have an angle to play a build, like an attack speed based build, but you don't have item, but you don't have the items to play it yet. Like you have an angle to play Azir, you know, RFC Gwensu's that's like best in slot um so or like Ophelia something like that so if you have an angle to play one of these builds then just take it and, the, and you can take it and good to go or if you already have those units man and you don't have the items committed you're good to go um already talked about these already talked about these caretakers chosen so um this is really good I actually this is just really good all the time uh, ideally you want to just go fast seven a lot of times I'll take this I actually have a lot of practice on board I was forcing challengers a lot last set because I thought they were fun and what I would do last set, and you can do this this set as well, a lot of times I'll just lost streak to get a really fast seven, and then I'll just spike so hard on seven. Like I'll do like a three, five roll down, and I would have like a two star Yasuo and a two star Kaiso with Kaiso having a, um, a you know, like a spear, of, uh, a spear of Sojin Radiant, right? So um, yeah, take this if you can spike really hard on a level seven board. And a lot of times I take this, I lost streak, and then just like I'll be at like 40 HP, but then I'll just win all of stage four and I'm just so far ahead now. Um, so it can be really good um, for that. Um, especially comps that have dual carry, every comp is a dual carry now. Challenger comp don't need to talk about this. Cruel Pact, so I'm not a Cruel Pact player. I, I, I can't tell you very specific information on this, but you know, typically you'll go to level seven as early as possible and you just roll it down and you just win streak stage two, stage three, um, and then hopefully stage four as well and then you get a top four. Um, and then you can transition this and slowly go to level eight and then you know try to win the game off of that. That's usually how people play that. You wanna play win streak early. Okay, Cursed Crown, you take, this is a win more augment. So if you are really far ahead and you just think you can just punish this lobby, you can really turn it up uh, by having two extra units on your board. Take this, you'll be good to go. But just know that the opportunity cost, like people don't always think about the opportunity cost. If you can't actually make use of the two extra team size and you might end up losing rounds, like just think about it, you are taking a pris prismatic augment. So the opportunity cost of like, you could have had, um, I don't know, you could have had a binary airdrop and someone's taking that and getting so much tempo. So you just gotta be, you, you gotta be mindful of that whenever you take this. Already talked about all these, already talked about all these. Endless Horde, this is another win more augment. It's very good in things like Sorks where like you just deal a lot of damage really fast. It's not good in something like vertical challengers because your challengers are taking damage. So like units that don't take a lot of damage and you can just build a lot of front line, like just put random units on the front line, your Sorks are just doing a lot of damage. You can hit your vertical thresholds. Um, and then ideally you wanna get legendary units in. Like you can use this for really good tempo, go nine, get legendary units in. This is like more of a win more augment. So take this when you're already far ahead, I think usually. That's usually when I take it. Final reserves. So whenever you take final reserves, take this if you are have a really good econ and you have a level nine angle. You take this and you go nine, and then you and then you send it. Um, that's essentially what you do. Um, so you get, you get it popped and then you go nine. You got to know how to build level nine boards. And if legendaries aren't super good in the meta, like right now, the legendaries aren't super good at the time of making this video. Um, so I would not be taking this augment as much. Um, I, I was playing a game on the PBU last night. I saw Hunter, who is a challenger player. Uh, he, he took this and I was like, oh no, I'm about to fight Hunter. I fight him in two rounds. He took it and he died the next round. I was like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> legendaries aren't super good. Uh, anyways, uh, golden ticket. Take this if you're a rerolling. Very, very, very strong in rerolling. I took this and got a Cho'Gath 3 for free. Um, we already talked about these. Hedge fund, uh, hedge fund, take this if you uh, want to go fast eight or fast nine and you're good to go, especially if you already ha already have a lot of gold. Um, cool. Uh, bulwark, you take this if you don't have any tank items. You know, you built a bunch of carry items. You're like, oh man, I don't really have tank items. Take the tank items, you're good to go. Infernal contract, uh, your max level is seven. So um, 
a lot, dude, I've taken this and I got a Lux three for free because it was like, I was playing an uncontested board. So you can take this if your board spikes really hard on seven and you can look for three star three cost or a three star four cost if you're uncontested, you can hit it on level seven. I hit, I hit a Lux three on a single roll down from having no Luxes <laughs> before because I was completely uncontested. Uh, okay, Invoker, we already talked about this. Um, already talked about this. Uh, already talked about Jeweled Lotus. Level up, uh, level up is really good. The earlier you take it on into the game, uh, typically what you'll do is you'll lose streak and then um, you'll just level and stay at 50 gold and you go fast nine or fast eight. Uh, is typically what you want to do. You can also use this to gain some tempo. You can get a really early level six, but just keep in mind, like a lot of people try to use this for, use this for tempo. You gotta be really strong to use this for tempo. Like yeah, a lot of upgraded units because you don't have, a, like if someone else has a prismatic combat augment, you do not. Um, so if you want to play tempo, you have to be really strong to do that. But other than that, you typically lost streak, go fast eight or fast nine. Uh, Living Forge, this is generally fine if a lot of Ornn artifacts are strong. Um, if they're not, then don't take this. Uh, lucky gloves. Um, your lucky gloves will always give your items ideal items. Gain three sparring gloves. So this is good if you already have a TG committed. Um, then you can have multiple of them, and then and then it can be pretty good, pretty good for tempo. March of progress. So March of progress is better the earlier you're taking it on the game. I think you can only be offered it on two one now. Um, but take March of progress, and you will typically play a three cost reroll. Um, because you will get a really early level seven or a really early level six, and then you will roll on those intervals. You typically won't take this and play a one cost reroll because you'll be pushing levels too fast. Uh, and then you spike really hard in the game. So you usually want to be very strong on stage three, stage four, uh, because you have or you just have a massive econ advantage right there. And then you can win the game by three starring something. Um, and then you naturally get level eight around five, one or so. I, I can't remember the exact interval, but it's around five, one or so. So even if you don't hit a three cost uh, two star, you can still play around a four cost build. That's fine. But you typically want to tempo really, really, really hard on stage three, stage four. Cool, don't need to talk about these. Overlaying Force, take this if you need extra AD items. Like you have a Rage Blade, but you don't have a Death Blade and Infinity Edge. Okay, cool, I'm taking it and I'm playing Nefilios. Cool, we're good to go. Um, okay, uh, Pandora's, I'm gonna talk about it. Freaky Friday, this is generally a fine augment to take, especially if you don't have three items committed to a carry yet. And then like, let's say you're playing like a Vanquisher build and then you can build a um, an Infinity Force on your Zaya and one on your Nyla, good to go. Same idea on these. Okay. Um, pumping up already talked about it. radiant relics. Uh, this is really good, especially if you don't have an item committed on somebody. So, um, like last night I had a Darius three star, but he was missing an item. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna use this right. I'm gonna take this radiant. I'm gonna really supercharge. I'm really power him up. Um, and so, yeah, so it's just good. Um, roll, roll the dice, gain a rascal's glove, which equips two radiant items. So again, all of these ones like this are really good. If you have a very powerful unit on your board that has no items and you can commit, I uh, commit this to them. So like you have a two star, you don't have a, you don't have like any, um, you don't have any good tank items. You have a two star Nazis, boom. Now you have good tank items. You know, you have a two star Nazis. You're good to go. Um, or you put this on a two star carry like Nyla. You didn't have items for it. You're good to go. Okay, shopping spree, gain one gold per round. When you level up, gain a number of free shop refreshes equal to your level. Oh, this is um, this is Lee Sin. So you wanna use this for tempo. So you push levels and then you gain these free refreshes. And so you wanna tempo really hard. You can also, these carry over between rounds. So if you're going to force like a two cost reroll on six, you can just lost streak and then go to level six and then have all these free refreshes. That can be a way to play it as well. Okay, um, don't need to talk about these, don't need to talk about these. Spectral supplies, uh, combat distribute four temporary items um, with the champions of the fewest items. This is really good in verticals. So um, like you're playing challengers, but you don't have a lot of items committed to anyone else. Then you have like these really, these units that are juiced up by their trait, but they don't have any items. Like, you know, you can do this, this. Challengers, Shrima, Sorks, that sort of thing. I already talked about these starter kits. Uh, starter kit is really good in low elo. You can just use this to have free direction, free tempo. It tells you exactly what board you're gonna play. So if you just need, uh, if you don't wanna use your brain, take this and it's really good in low elo. You can just, you know, have a pretty free free top four in low elo um, because it makes the game just, you're playing the game on easy mode. Now, if you're high elo, um, this is not a super good augment usually, unless the meta is really, 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 really flexible. Then it's fine to take, but it's it doesn't feel that strong to me. Um, okay, tax exchange crown. Take this if you want attack crown, um, or if you can utilize two spatulas. Like you have like two tiers on your bench, and you already have a blue buff committed, and like you don't want another one, and you're playing sorks. Okay, okay, we're playing eight sorks today, baby. And then you'll be good to go. Um, all right, golden egg. You only take this when you are really far ahead. Um, when you're really far ahead, like you're like you're like hundred streaked all the way to four two, and you get this offered. Okay, 
we're doing this. Um, other than that, you know, it's really risky. You win the game for free when it pops, but um, you know, you got to be really far ahead. Think fast. Um, is think fast still? Think fast has been removed. Uh, but if it's back into the game, you take this and you think fast. You roll. You roll it down. So take this if you're already about to roll down. Um, Tiniest Titan. I like this one. This one's pretty good. Your attack is small and speedy and gain heals too. Um, you can take this in loose streak. Um, typically that's the best way to play it. Um, you take this and you open fort lost streak and you just get a huge econ advantage. Additionally, if you take this and you just want to play like mid roll, like you're not high rolling, you're not low rolling. Um, and you just like win loss. That's fine. You know, you gain the gold, you gain the health, you'd be at high health, you'd be a good gold, but typically you want to lost streak if you can. We're going to talk about these unleash arcana. Take this. If you need AP items, you're playing an AP board, you know, um, like you're playing, um, a zero Silco and you have a zero items, but you don't have Silco items. Cool. Uh, now I have Silco items. We're good to go. Um, cool. Wondering trainer gaining training dummy it has three random emblems. So take this, especially if emblems are very good in the meta right now, emblems are very good and you can create some really wacky boards can give you some really good early game tempo, um, with just a lot of HP on your board. Sometimes, sometimes you can't make use out of the emblems and then you don't have a powerful early game. So it feels kind of weird. Uh, but it gives you some direction. You can build, build around it. Wellness trust gain three gold. If you have at least 40 gold, uh, your tax just in heals. So, um, you can take this. Uh, it's fine. Um, if you're really far ahead, I like it when you're far ahead. I wouldn't take this to stack on top of another econ augment unless you know you're going to go level nine and build a really strong board. So typically you wouldn't want to take a, yeah, like a gold econ augment and then take wellness trust. Um, it's just like, yeah, your, your board's going to be too weak unless you can build like a really crazy board. Uh, what the forge. I really like this when I'm already really far ahead. This can like guarantee you a very high placement. Um, but it is, um, it, your cap is usually lowered. So like the later you go into the game, best in slot is really, really important. So like I'm playing like an RE carry build and I go, I go level nine and I don't have like the, the, specific what the forge items I need for her, which would be, um, death fires, grass and monozane. I didn't hit those because they're, they're random and I'm having to play Trinity force Ari. I would be much better off playing blue buff Gunblade, jeweled gauntlet. Right. Uh, so, so this is really good for tempo it can get you a free top four usually. Um, and then Zonkran. So guys, those are all the augments here. Uh, probably play this video on times two speed if you want to watch it, but I uh, hope this was helpful to anybody watching this and Hey guys, I stream on YouTube. Make sure and check it out. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one.